Okay, so we have the drone ready to go out in the arena. So guys inside here, if you look on the screen, you can see just the, uh, the, the standard feed from the drone just before we fly. Um, and guys outside, hopefully you can see the drone ready to, ready to go. Um, so Harry is our pilot today. He's our head of training at Copters and he's just gonna take the drone off now, uh, put it up and hover it above the field um, so you can see what this looks like. Uh, while he's doing this, while he's just pulling up and hovering, if you have a look at the, uh, the feed out for the drone on the screen, you see it looks like it's quite busy, there's quite a lot of data there, um, but when you break it down it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So the bar along the top is kind of like the status bar, so you've just got the information on the health of the drone effectively. So you can see that it's in flight and that it's got GPS connection. Um, you can see the number of satellites it's connected to. The little blue plane uh, is a clever little system that tells you if there's any aircraft nearby. If that goes amber, you need to watch out because there might be something kilometers away but still to be aware of. If it goes red, normally means you should land immediately because there might be a light aircraft somewhere in the vicinity. Um, you've then got the collision avoidance symbol to say that that's all up and running and it's all green. You've got the controller status. You've got the connection status, the battery status, uh, and then the menu button as well. So looks like a lot, but along the top, it's fairly simple. Everything's green. Everything looks good to go. Um, if we look across the screen there, uh, you can just see you've got sort of a, a compass so you can get your direction and then a map in the bottom left corner. Um, what that can be switched to as well is uh, an FPV camera. So as Harry spins the visual camera around on the gimbal on the drone so that's just if you can imagine it located just underneath the drone um, you might lose orientation because he spanned the camera around it's facing a certain direction he's not sure where he's facing so what he's done there is he's just switched across to the FPV camera and that allows him to work out where the drone's facing and now that's in that bottom corner so he can see it uh, at any point so if he just goes back across to the standard camera now and what Harry's going to do is he's going to utilize that powerful zoom on the camera and he's going to zoom in on I don't know if any of you are familiar with the area but there's a big retail park with a Tesco just across across the way um, so he's going to zoom in on the car park there we measured that it's about 500 meters about half a kilometer from where we're flying um, so as he pulls in you'll be able to see that you can pick up quite clearly vehicles people etc at that distance um, there's obvious use cases there within the search and rescue world in that you can be sat a long distance away and still cover a large area um, but there's also obvious applications in policing for example you can see the drone uh, and watch people handing stuff to other people or vehicles passing other vehicles or track vehicles without them knowing that the drone is there being able to see or, or hear it um, so that's in now at 80 times zoom and if Harry just carries right the way on into 200 times so even at 200 times zoom and it is a little bit windy out there today you can still see the amount of shake on the gimbal is is minimal um, so if you imagine if you zoom in with your phone camera uh, you'll see that that shakes a little bit because your hand isn't stable and that might be at eight times zoom so 200 times zoom on a drone up in the air it's still able to hold relatively stable um, and if harry just pulls that zoom back out for us now you can see just how far away we uh, we were at that point Okay, um, so I think what we're going to show you next is the um, object tracking capability of the drone. So there's a few, as I mentioned, sort of AI smart features built into the system. And this is the one that's the most applicable within the public safety world. Um, so the main use cases for that, again, would be within policing, so tracking a target or a vehicle, make sure you don't lose it. Um, but also, again, in public safety, if you've got someone uh, who's, who's wandering across a field or anything like that, or you want to make sure you know where they're going, you can track tap and track so harry's just tapped the middle button of those three white logos five white logos sorry across the top that's gone blue and what that gives you is a yellow circle like a target so the ai will pick up people vehicles and objects that it knows it can track um, he's tapped on cameron there uh, and now harry will be stood there with no control over the drone whatsoever he's not touching any of the buttons he's letting it track him with no input at all so at this point, the drone will be sat and it will stay in the same location, so you don't have to worry about it moving around, but the camera will spin, zoom, and pan as it needs to. The really clever thing with this as well is, um, especially if you're tracking vehicles, if the target goes behind anything and it loses the target, it will automatically calculate the speed the target's moving at, and the camera will adjust until it picks that target back up. So you don't have to worry about it going behind trees 
uh, or barriers if you're tracking a car on the motorway, for example, because it'll track where it's going to be and it'll pick the target straight back up. And as you can see, uh, Harry will just be flicking there between the zoom capability of the camera uh, while he's tracking. Um, another smart feature the drone has is the ability to drop a pin, which is more applicable to the mm -hmm. search and rescue world. So what Harry can do when he's finished tracking, uh, tracking Cameron there is he can drop a pin on a certain location. Now what that means is if you find something that might be of interest while you're flying your drone mission, but it's not immediate, it's not critical, you can drop a pin where it is, carry on with your mission, fly your mission, and then all you've got to do, uh, so if Harry pans away, uh, is he can tap on the pin button and it'll spin back around to that point that he's locked onto. So that there has gone back to the target he's locked. Say you've picked up a heat signature, you don't think it's going to be a person. It probably looks a bit more like a rabbit or a fox, but you want to make sure and take a look at it after you finish the rest of the mission. You can lock a point with it. The camera will pin back around and lock onto that. Um, so what we're going to show now is the thermal camera. Um, so Harry's just tapped there. You can see the zoom wide and one of those said IR. So that's infrared to switch between zoom wide and thermal sensor. Um, you can see there, it still will do the object track and it'll still do the drop of pin. So it's just locking onto what it thinks can be targets as well. Um, but Harry's got all the palette options across the bottom as well. So I know that within search and rescue, I think you guys prefer to use uh, white hot. Do you white hot, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the time you use white hot for search and rescue. As you can see, scanning the stadium, there is very little to, to no sort of reasonable heat signatures within it. Um, if Harry pans that around and just picks, uh, picks someone back up. So there you go, you've got the guys, you guys in the audience there. So very obvious there, the, um, you know, where, where, where people and targets are with the thermal camera. That's just at no zoom. The thermal camera will zoom in. Now that is a digital zoom, so you will start to lose resolution as you carry that zoom in. Um, but up to sort of eight times zoom, you'll still get a reasonably clear image for a thermal camera. Um, so you can, again, you can be sat a long distance away from a target, uh, zoom in and make sure it's a person and not, again, a badger or a fox mm -hmm. or a rabbit. So Harry just wants to pull that um, zoom back out. And again, you can pick everyone up nice and clearly. And Harry, if you just show us a couple of the different palettes so you can see how these work. Most of these are a bit more uh, inspection based after white hot, but it's good to see how the different palettes read. And they can be better for different environments. So white hot might work where there's a real big discrepancy if it's a, if it's a lovely cold day for, for searching. Um, if it's a bit warmer, you might want to go for a different palette uh, and cycle through for one that works. And just while Harry's doing that, it's worth mentioning some of the safety features that are built into the drone. So I mentioned there's quite a lot of clever technology in there to stop there being any failures. So you've got um, GPS redundancy, IMU redundancy, um, all these little internal systems. There's double, triple, quadruple redundancy in them. So any failures, any issues, like any standard manned aircraft, the drone's going to carry on flying. Also, if for any reason at this point, one of the props was to fail on the drone, a traditional risk of flying a quadcopter, which is what this is, because it's got four props, is that if you lose one propeller, that's it, that's game over. The drone is, the drone is down and you're not getting it back. Um, with this system now, it has the ability to, um, you could almost say land on three propellers. It's quite a rough landing. It's, you, you wouldn't want to be underneath it when it comes down, but the drone will come down, um, land a little bit heavier than it wants to, but it'll protect your very expensive camera that's sat underneath it. It'll give anyone underneath it plenty of time to get clear, uh, and you'll definitely be able to salvage your equipment. You might have to repair one of the legs, but it's going to be completely usable from that point on. Um, so it really does help with the safety of the drone. If you're flying over congested areas, you might be flying over people. With these larger, more capable systems, um, you, can, you can put them up without that risk in mind. And also, as I mentioned during the presentation, this does have a very high wind tolerance and it does have an IP45 weather rating as well. So if it was raining, snowing, sleeting out there, whatever, which anything could happen in this country, um, you know you can put the drone up in, in any weather. And you can see there with Harry zooming in, the AI is just picking out objects it think it might be able to track. Um, what we've got there is, um, if we can see the, uh, the seat number there, and I think we've got the... If we just show the um, laser rangefinder, Harry, for the distance, if we can go on something a little bit, maybe a little bit further away, so we'll pick it up. 
Um, so if you see the numbers that have just flashed up below where it says wide on the screen there, you've got the distance, which is RNG, uh, and then you've got ASL is above sea level, so that's the altitude of the drone. So that distance number, 48 meters, is using a little laser rangefinder built into the camera. So when you are looking at uh, any target with the drone, that will tell you exactly how far away that is, up to about 1,500 meters away uh, and down to about three meters away. So again, search and rescue applications. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can tell uh, you've picked up a thermal, thermal signature, you look a bit closer, it is indeed a person. You know where the drone is because of the GPS and you know exactly how far away and in what direction that person is and you can start to direct your, your ground team, whatever it may be, uh, to go towards those people. And Harry, if you can just put the drone back up again, it'd be good to, uh, if we can get some, some imagery from, from higher up. Um, potentially, if you can put it up and just spin the thermal down so we can get a, a, a sort of a wide angle, far away thermal image of the, of the stadium as well, that'd be great. So these packages with this drone, Harry, Harry is a, a very competent pilot, but the great thing is you don't have to be super advanced to use this technology. It looks a little bit daunting when you, when you see it in person. Uh, for the guys that are in here, if you've not gone out and seen it, we'll have it back on our stand. It's A12, so we're going to sit the drone just behind where we are now on our stand. If you want to come and see it this afternoon and see what you're getting this imagery from, come across to A12 and we'll, we'll show you the drone itself. You can have a look at it and see see what you're seeing here um, but yeah really easy to operate um, once you've had the correct training which is what we offer uh, you can put one of these drones up um, and it is really easy to fly this is one operator you can use it with two but to be honest it's that easy to use for these kind of simple missions that one pilot with one controller is is more than adequate to operate the kit the great thing is as well the drone that Kyle's using is kind of like the little brother to this system all the outputs, unless I'm on Kyle, all the outputs are very similar. So yeah, yeah. all the readouts, the data, everything you get on the screen for Kyle's much smaller drone is very, very similar to this. So if they ever come to upgrade in the future, all this is going to be super, super familiar and they can pick the larger drone up and use it with, without any issues. Anything, Kyle, that you've got to, uh, to say on this or on the, uh, on the Mavic as well? Any, any features that maybe I've not picked up on or features that you use in ways we've not discussed? Um, I don't think there's anything that we use currently that um, we've not discussed, but obviously something on here that with the pinpoint feature that would be perfect for us that if we were to make a find with the drone, we could easily pinpoint where that casualty is and still be able to kind of navigate in our team if they're at the other side of the field, be able to very quickly navigate them to the missing person and be able to quickly switch between that. So we could keep an eye on the casualty and also work out where our team are in relation to that casualty. That's a feature that our drone doesn't have that I think would be, would be ideal. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing with, um, you know, you're great to the slightly larger kit and there is all these extra capabilities built in. Um, this one does have um, the ability to go into the discrete mode, same as the Mavic does, uh, but it's also got beacons built into the top and bottom, very, very bright beacons built into mm. the top and bottom of the drone. Uh, so when, when Kyle mentioned there, uh, using the pinpoint, that might be a way to get around flying with other aircraft in the area, because otherwise you might have to deploy two drones to, to yes. run that kind of mission. Um, the good thing is if you do have to deploy multiple drones, or if there's a helicopter in the area, whatever else it may be, uh, you can set the beacons going. I think Harry can turn those on. Obviously, us in here, we won't be able to see them. Um, but out there, they'll be able to see the beacons flashing. Uh, so any aircraft in the area will be able to see the drone from, from a good distance away. Uh, and again, if you want to come and see it on the stand, if you're not outside, we can put those on in the stand. You can see the beacons flashing as well. So I think Harry's just going to bring it down and back into land. Um, he's landing it manually for now. There is, uh, you do have the ability to land it uh, via just a return to home button. So if for any reason you get in any trouble, I don't know if this has happened to you guys at all, but we know there's been times in the past where pilots have panicked and worried about landing or or you know, they've, they've not known where to land, and you can tap one button on the controller, it's a big H, you can't miss it. The drone, when it took off, logged exactly where it took off from. So the drone will take itself up to a safe altitude, fly itself home, and land on that exact spot. Um, so again, super easy to operate. Uh, you don't really have to worry too much about any issues. No, I think we've only ever used the return to home feature a few times, and that's been like when 
our control has been radio in us to tell us we need to come back but obviously we need to listen to the radio as well as try and fly the drone so if you just press the return to home button it can bring itself back you can just keep your eye on it but listen so there's not too much going on and then when you understand what's going on you can regain control and bring the drone back yourself if you want or just allow it to and also we use that for in case of kind of pilot incapacitation or something like that that the spotter who isn't trained to fly the drone can just press a button bring it back and everybody is, is safe yeah there's all these features built in which uh, I mean, the way we see it is that it's a lot easier to train someone to be a drone pilot than it is to train them to work in, in search and rescue or to work in policing or to work in fire. So the drone piloting side of it should be and is the easy part. We're not expecting drone pilots to train to be search and rescue operators. Yeah. We're expecting search and rescue operators to train to be drone mm -hmm. pilots. Um, okay, well, I think that is everything we've got time for. We're going to run out. Harry's just switched across there to the, uh, to the split view, so you've got the two cameras at once. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for listening. I think we've run out of time for questions, but I'm going to jump back onto our stand. It's A12. Any questions, please do come across. As I said, we're going to have the drone back on stand as well. Please come and see it. Kyle, thanks for, yep. thanks for joining us. Thank and you yeah, for listening. Thanks everyone for your time. Thank you.